Hi guys, it's Max from HighOnAndroid.com, where we get on Android every day. Anyway, let's do a quick benchmark shootout between the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 US model of the Galaxy Note 8 versus the Exynos 8895 International model. Which one do you think is faster? Let's find out. Hi right, guys, in this first test, I did an 2-2 benchmark. I've got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 US T-Mobile version on the left, and I've got the Exynos 8895 International version on the right, the gold one. All right, looking at the scores, you can clearly see the Exynos 8895 kicking ass with 3D at 72,569 versus 67,307. That pretty much tells you it's gonna run a little bit faster with games, graphics. Also, UX is higher, CPU is slightly higher, and also RAM is slightly higher. Now, the Galaxy Note 8 actually runs slightly underclocked. So I went ahead and put them both in its performance mode, which will utilize 100% of the CPU power, and did the test again. <laughs> But the Exynos version still beats the Qualcomm by about the same amount of numbers as before. 176,943 versus 169,359. Alright, in this next test, I loaded up the Geekbench benchmark. And let's go ahead and see which one wins. <laughs> And looking at the results, the single core for the Galaxy Note 8 Exynos is higher than Qualcomm. This is actually surprising. I thought actually the Qualcomm would beat in the single core since the Exynos has been known to run better with more cores. Of course, the Exynos also wins for multi-core and this clearly proves that the Exynos is more efficient, slightly faster than the Qualcomm version as I originally expected. Now I know you guys want more tests so I did just one more test. Now at this point we pretty much know the Exynos is slightly faster um, but I wanted to do one more tests just to make sure I ran the GFX OpenGL benchmark. And this took quite a while actually to do. Interestingly, the Qualcomm version actually ran out of memory during one of the tests, the Manhattan 3.1. But we can compare the results before that, and you can see the car chase, 752, uh, 13 frames per second versus 12 frames per second on the Qualcomm. So Exynos, um, slightly better in frames per second for all the tests, all right? 25 frames per second versus 24. 21 frames per second, 20 frames per second. And also notice that the Exynos version was able to complete the, all the tests while the Qualcomm wasn't able to, ran out of memory on one of the tests. All right, as you can see in this video, the Exynos version is quite faster than the Qualcomm version. Now, what can you expect in daily driving? Pretty much faster processing with the Exynos version, obviously slightly faster. And also it will run a lot cooler because it's a lot more efficient. And also you'll get maybe two to three hours better battery life, which is what I have seen with the S8, uh, S8 Plus. So I'll definitely do an SOT screen on time test for both of these to give you guys concrete results. But as you can see, the Exynos version is quite the beast. Yes, and if you do have the choice of getting the international model if you're on GSM such as AT&T or T-Mobile, I do highly recommend the Exynos version, plus you can unlock the bootloader and root and install custom ROMs. So definitely, this is a better phone. Also, dual SIM, 
and also gold S Pen. Um, definitely check out my unboxing video of this international model. Right now, the international model is on sale on eBay for $739, so it's also a steal if you're looking for an unlocked phone. My next step is obviously gonna go rooted and install custom ROMs. There are some cool mods, like you can actually do 4K 60 frames per second once you root it and install some mods. So I'm gonna go look into it. I'm like super high on Android. Anyway, don't forget to hit the thumbs up for me, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus, Instagram, Periscope, and as always, Stay on Android. Click here to subscribe.